When I first got my Trunk CX-1, the Z-axis wouldn't move. And no matter how much I tightened the nuts, bolts and wheels, the arm would still just flail around. Then the bed started to wobble too, so I decided to replace the wheels with linear rails. Now for this mod you're going to need two 300mm long linear rails, type MGN12H, and three printed parts, the links for which you can find in the description below. Now this is a reasonable effect summary of the Trunk CX-1, and the first thing I wanted to do was to stop the bed from wobbling, so remove the bed and the guide which holds the springs and the wheels together, and our wheels, like my hopes and dreams, can just be thrown away, and we can add our first linear rail. You can attach this using M3 bolts with T-nuts, but the problem is that the belt gets in the way. So just move the motor and the bearing uh, to the front of the profile. Once that's done, we introduce our first 3D printed part. Its job is to simply hold onto the belt with those little teeth and uh, attach itself to the carriage. Once we've done that, we can just add the guide back and move the bed back in place. That's basically that mod done. Next, I wanted to focus on the Z-axis problem I had. I didn't, had no idea how much weight the, the little tiny carriage could actually hold, so I decided to try and make things as light as possible. So I removed the metal plate, and we have another set of hopes and dreams, goodbye. Uh, so I thought, okay, well, let me move the extruder and attach it to the frame itself, seeing as we're not going to have anything this side of the aluminium profile. So this is the next 3D printed piece, or you can find metal ones. It's kind of handy because the slots let you just attach it anyway on the aluminium profile and the four holes obviously allow you to rebuild the extruder assembly. So shove that in place and then just rebuild the extruder and that's done. So now we get to add the, the next linear rail. Uh, you just detach this, slide it in place, attach it using the, the M3 uh, nuts and bolts as before and just move the plastic arm back and drill four holes as level as you can and then shove some some M3 bolts in that. Put the arm back on, hope your fingers still work and we're pretty good for now. Uh, making a move up and down, we're just going to move the whole motor assembly over and take the brass screw and turn it upside down so it's barely showing submission. And finally we have the last 3D printed piece. This one its job is to hold onto the brass screw with some holes for the the bolts and then of course you just shove some M4 bolt uh, nuts through with bolts to attach it to the arm itself. Now, as you see there at the bottom, the, the motor is hanging off the edge. In the real world it's actually hanging about 50% off. So this we need to attach it to the floor somehow. Uh, the last piece that I thought I could reuse is this metal one. It's got three nice hefty holes to make it hold on and even though this doesn't show it, at the top there's some holes for where the extruder assembly used to be that could actually hold onto the motor. So just rotate that into place, move the motor out of the way, slide things in. And now this is where things get a little bit tricky. If you're going to put, uh, I think there were M5 bolts and that's through. You're going to have to countersink them on the other side, but it's not that hard. Finally, just move the motor back in place, add some screws. And hey presto, your, your trunksy is now linear railish.